Hall of Famer Michael Irvin with us tonight. You see him now on the NFL Network, of course. And we're going to talk in a minute about an event called MegaFest that means a lot to Michael and a big festival for the entire family coming up next month in Dallas. We'll have some details on that. But let's talk some football. You said the Cowboys were maybe nothing more than a 500 team if they don't get the Des Bryant deal done. Is that just a TV guy talking, or did you actually believe that? Oh, God, no. I actually, absolutely, I believe that. I mean, and, and you have, I, had, I had heard about how great Terrence Williams was doing in practice as, as, as the lead receiver. But you got to remember now, this is in OTAs. The emotion and stuff that Des plays with, it's not something that goes away. See, OTAs is one thing. Week 8, 9, and 10, being the emotional leader is a whole nother thing. And Dez has that, no doubt in my mind, especially when we're unsure about what kind of running game we're going to have. Without Dez Bryant, I was being generous when I gave you 8 and 8. Did you ever think Jerry w would allow Dez to go into the season as the franchise player, or did you always think this deal would get done? You know what? I, I, I thought there was a chance that Jerry would allow Dez to go into the season and, and thanks thank you social media I think it helped a lot in this case because I think Dez making that last proclamation that I will not show up and doing it in front of the world you start thinking about risk versus reward okay if I don't show up I'm losing about eight nine hundred thousand dollars but I'm going to make another 12.2 million I did not show up and still win in this deal to prove a point and that would have been devastated, I think, devastating for the Dallas Cowboys. And finally, do you worry at all about Des Bryant's approach now that he has a long-term deal in place? Now, you know what? Listen, and that's why I, lo I love the deal. The deal gives him the security. So, yes, people will say, well, he didn't get the $132 million deal that Calvin Johnson had, but that was an eight-year deal. Des was fighting for money up front and not all of these catches and hooks on me getting it because of past behavior. So, yeah, I I I'm glad with where he is, and I want him to have his security. And now, like I said earlier, Dez is not the kind of guy that the passion for winning football is going to dwindle in. He'll play all hard, he'll play every one of these years very hard. Let me ask you about Jerry Jones. You know him better than most people do. And, and here's a man well into his 70s who still seems very active, very engaged. He's mm -hmm. talking about Jay-Z and dealing with him in these yeah. negotiations. But how do you see maybe his role having changed in the, in the Cowboys front office? What's it like for you to observe that? Well, I think, you know, Mike, you and I have talked about it, our responsibilities as a father and how we want to be as fathers. I mean, Jerry has done a wonderful job. You can say whatever you want uh, um, and, and owning the Cowboys and then making it a family business. And, and uh, all fathers, I hope, as Bishop always say, you want your ceiling to be your kid's floor. And at some point, you got to give them that, give them the ball to run with it. And Jerry's doing that. He's still got his hands on things just to make sure, but he's doing that. And, and, and I appreciate the way he's trying to go about things right now. Des Bryant, of course, one of the big offseason stories. Uh, Greg Hardy, the other for the Cowboys, uh, had his yeah. suspension reduced from 10 to 4 games. Uh, were you surprised to see it reduced by that amount? I was, and I was pleasantly surprised, to be honest with you. And, and I think even those injections during the beginning of a season will be great because the Cowboys get through the first four games and then you start getting injection of talent and you can start being just, just that will help raise you up. So, yeah, I thought it was great for the Dallas Cowboys, but I was surprised. As we speak, Tom Brady's suspension is four games as well. Is it fair in your mind for Hardy and Brady to each have the same suspension right now? Well, it, well it's fair in my mind is one thing. You know what I mean? But it's certainly, they, they see things as fair. I don't think Tom Brady should have been suspended, period, anyway. You know, so you certainly, that would say, no, I do not believe it's fair. You know, I, I just didn't think Tom Brady should have been suspended. What advice would you have for, for Greg Hardy or maybe even Randy Gregory, guys, you know, who bring some, some baggage to this, this thing in Dallas? Certainly you, you've been there. Yeah. Uh, what, what advice would you have for them in terms of, of dealing with what they have to deal with and, and concentrating in the way they have to to be football players here? Right, well, all, both of those guys that you're talking about right there are passionate guys, you know, and, and, and I want to use that passion. I don't want to try. I don't want to diminish it, and I want to try to tell them to put their energies towards that great passion, not just on the football field, but taking whatever you've done that has not been seen correctly and, and, and using it for the better. You know, uh, uh, go fight against domestic violence. Go step out that way. Turn the passion into something good because ultimately it's going to follow you the rest of your life. 
Cowboys get the Des deal done. Of course, DeMarco Murray is gone now. Uh, Randall McFadden, uh, Ryan Williams, Lance Dunbar. Yeah. You worry about this this football team without uh, the guy who happened to lead the league in rushing by a mile last year? Yeah, I do. And I've been taking a beating all offseason by saying, because I said I do, you know. And it, it's not that I don't believe that this is a great offensive line. It is. And I was the first person, I mean the very first, to say and compare them to the offensive lines that we we're playing with. But that being said, I've seen running backs get with great offensive lines and go nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So I love what I'm hearing. I love hearing the young man uh, Joseph say that, you know, there was meat left on the bone. Go get that meat that left on the bone. But remember, to eat that well, you got to get through the line first before you get to that meat left on the bone. Be strong enough to get through that like DeMarco Murray was. You got a healthy Tony Romo for the first time in a while coming into a camp. You, you do have uncertainty at running back. Yeah. Dez is in line. You got a good offensive line. Assuming the defense improves, should the Cowboys cons be considered the favorites in the NFC? You know, I, when, when, with all things get, being equal back on offense, I would have had the Cowboys going to the Super Bowl had we had the same running game. And I can't do that now because I haven't seen the running game. But now with all of the infusions that they've had on defense and then that Greg Hardy thing cut down to four games, oh, my God, if they can find a running game early, if they can find a running game early similar to what they had last year, there's no doubt the Cowboys have a good shot, a great shot at getting to a Super Bowl.